top 10 strategies to improve your mental health, according to me, Jen Slay. Mental health is losing its stigma, but it still has a little bit of that stigma. And the only way we're gonna get rid of it is to talk about it. As a counselor, therapist, coach, I talk to a lot of men and women about their coping mechanisms. And oftentimes those coping mechanisms could use a little bit of work. Someone might cope with their issues by brushing them aside and not dealing with them, only for it to resurface later. Or they might busy themselves so much that they just don't have time to think because they have this to-do list that they always have to do. And you know, that just leads to burnout. Or sometimes people will hold everything in, hold everything in and blow up, have a freak out session, and then they're calm until the next freakout session. But you know, mental health has a lot to do, not only with the coping mechanisms, but with a chemical imbalance. But it's so important that once we regulate that imbalance, that we learn how to cope. Today, we have Nicole Stevenson, who's gonna come and help us learn about different strategies to improve our mental health. Welcome, Nicole. So thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. So Nicole, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're up to? Well, I uh, founded The Mama Project, which is a mental health organization that helps mm -hmm. moms struggling with their mental wellness. Yes, and there's different things going on for that, right? Yes, so it's an online support group, mm -hmm. as well as we're hosting a Mama Project conference in August. So Nicole is gonna help me with our top 10 today. Are you ready? I'm ready. One, learn a new way. Be flexible. How important is that, Nicole? It's really important. You don't want to be rigid. You want to. You don't want to be willy nilly. You don't want to go with the flow all the time. I mean, you have to uh, assertive. assertive. Yeah. yeah, stand up for, for what you believe in, but also, you know, don't be don't be a stick. When you when everything always has to be your way, you're just kind of inviting trouble. You're Absolutely. inviting problems with relationships with people. Mm -hmm. You're just inviting that stuff. So be flexible. Kind of like the wind in the bone <laughs> when the tree. Two, see a counselor or a therapist. A lot of people have this stigma about going to see somebody for mm -hmm. help. It's important to ask for help. You can't do it on your own. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's medications and whatnot to help you, but at the same time, there's so much more. You need to talk about it. You can't just push everything down, like mm -hmm. you said. You need to let it out. When doctors prescribe medications, but don't suggest going to see a counselor. Mm -mm. Because the med all the medications are doing is regulating that chemical imbalance, right? But no coping mechanisms. No coping mechanisms. That's right. Three, breathe. So important to breathe. Yes. Take the time. Um, when you meditate, you talk about meditation all the time. When you mm -hmm. take that time to just relax and, and just be yourself and mm -hmm. just calm yourself, it's mm -hmm. so important. Because yeah. we're such, we're so busy. It's such a busy lifestyle that we lead. Um, and there's always everything coming at us all the time. So if we just take a second and just relax, mm -hmm. go outside, mm -hmm. deep breaths. And some people think that they don't have time to do that, but really it just takes a couple of minutes. Five minutes. Take a time out. Mm -hmm. Give yourself a time out. We give it to our kids all the time. Give ourselves a time out and just breathe. It helps us to be able to think straight. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Clear your mind. Four. Think before you speak. Have you run into those people who they just blah, they, everything comes out of their mouth and they're not thinking of what they're saying before they say it and then mm -hmm. they end up hurting someone's feelings? I've done it. I don't take the time sometimes to just relax. Walk away from an aggressive situation and just think about what I'm gonna say. Walk away from the email. Don't respond to the Facebook message. Just yeah. don't make the phone call just yet. Give yeah. yourself a timeout. <laughs> Give yourself a timeout, that's right. So implement number three with number four. Mm -hmm. Breathe so that you can think before you speak, right? Because sometimes if we, if we just blurt out whatever is in our head, then sometimes it does make us feel better, but then there's the guilt that comes with it right. afterwards, right? And we'll get to the unforgiveness in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Five, Five, play the tape through to the end. When I thought of this one, it's because I sit with so many people and they catastrophize mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Everything is so much bigger than it actually is. Yeah, what our anxiety is telling us and the reality are two different things. Yes, Yeah. exactly. Because you think the world's gonna end if you don't make everybody happy around you. Exactly, and so oftentimes when I'm sitting with someone, I'll say, okay, so if the worst case scenario happened, 
Then what? They'll say, well, then they won't like me. And then, and then what? what? Well, I'll feel bad. Don't, don't catastrophize things. Things usually aren't as bad as they seem. Play the tape through to the end. Six. Surround yourself with positivity. Mm -hmm. So important. So important. Garbage in, garbage out. That's right. Whatever you put into your brain, into your system, whether it's food, whether it's drink, whether it's people, everything. If, you're, if it's negative, then that's what's going to come out. We become like the five people that we hang around with the most. Mm -hmm. So if we're hanging out with Debbie Downer down the street all the time, we become Debbie Downer. Yeah. It is really hard to lift people up when you're already down. Yeah. You can't do it. It's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. You're we pushing have to... them up. And you can't yeah. push them up. You gotta pull them up. Yeah. So we need to be around positive people. Absolutely. Seven. Okay, I say this so often and people are probably rolling their eyes, but drink water. Eat well and sleep well. So important. Just like garbage in, garbage out, if you're putting crap in your body. Yeah, you, you don't feel good. I know that sometimes when I go on my binges of sugar, that I don't feel good afterwards, right. but it's just, it tastes so good. Yeah. But then the afterwards is like, uh, It's only good for a moment. It's only good for a moment, exactly. Eight, become aware of your triggers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You, you have to know what um, sends your anxiety off. You have to know what mm -hmm. makes you want to crawl into bed and pull the covers over your head until it passes. Mm -hmm. um, once you realize what those triggers are, then you can handle them. You can deal with them. Yeah, yeah. and you can sometimes even prevent them. Absolutely. You know, prevent them from happening for, or even prevent yourself from getting in the situation where you're going to be triggered. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know that if you go to that spot or see that person or whatever it is, mm -hmm. even if it's music or TV or something that'll send yeah. you off, just avoid it. It's true. Yeah. Nine. Nine. Become the person you want to be. Don't try. Just become. So we all have this image in our head of who we want to be. Absolutely. Right? Yep. And that's fine and it's totally okay to do. But instead of saying, I'm gonna try to be more disciplined, I'm gonna try to, don't try, just, just do, do it. it. Just do it. And if you don't get, if, you, if you're not successful that first time, then just do it again. That's why we have a new day every 24 hours. We have to start go. again. It's a blank page. That's so right. what happened yesterday, it doesn't matter. Exactly, exactly. Love it. Ten. Forgive yourself. Big. Huge. Yeah. This is a tough one for me even. Um, nobody's perfect. We know that. But sometimes we have a higher standard for ourselves than we do for other people. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's like, if, if you think about a marathon runner that wants to win, I mean they all want to win, they take all of the weight off their shoulders that they can. Mm -hmm. So if there's a marathon runner with a 10 pound boulder on the shoulders, mm -hmm. they're not gonna win, it's just gonna slow them down, right? And that's what unforgiveness does, whether it's for ourselves or for somebody else. Mm -hmm. you, you can't run a marathon or run through life with all that unforgiveness that on your That journey shoulder. of life is hard when you're carrying the guilt mm -hmm. on your shoulders. We're, like you said, we're human. Yeah. We're going to make mistakes. We forgive other people for the mistakes that they make. So why can't we forgive ourselves? It's so important. And it's probably one of the biggest ones, guys. It's huge. It's huge. Thank you so much for coming, Nicole. Thanks for having me. So appreciative. Guys, please, thank you so much for coming. Please make sure to like, to comment, and to share. Because somebody needs to see this today. Bye. Bye.